There are now 33 MCU movies to rank. Let's do this thing. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I am ranking all 33 MCU films as the Marvels just hit theaters. Where will the Marvels land? You'll have to stay tuned and find out. Before I get into this thing, hit that like button, drop your ranking of all the MCU films down below. Where is the Marvels land for you? Subscribe and hit that notification bell to help reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers. It would mean a lot. I'm trying to make that final push as we near the end of the year. And go show some love to the unusual couple podcasts for weekly episodes with myself and my girlfriend. We have a blast with it. Go subscribe, it would mean a lot. So I've made this video twice this year. I make it every time there's a new MCU film kind of as a benchmark and there's always a few little changes so stay tuned if you guys watched the last video there are some little placement changes here and there as opinions do change and I won't spend tons of time talking about all of these movies because I talk about them a lot. So let's just start out and dead last at number 33 is Thor Love and Thunder. The movie's painfully unfunny and a complete drag to sit through. I probably will never watch it again. At number 32 I've got Thor The Dark World, a snoozer and probably the worst direct sequel the MCU's ever seen. It's a miracle we got more Thor movies after this one. Number 31 is The Incredible Hulk. This movie is really hard to rewatch because it feels so disconnected from the MCU with Edward Norton playing the main role. And honestly, it just doesn't feel like an MCU movie, which is to a fault. At number 30 is Captain Marvel. Goose and the dynamic between Nick Fury and Captain Marvel carry this movie, but it's so bland. I never go back and revisit this one. And Captain Marvel's character has gotten so much better ever since this movie. Number 29 is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I like the vision from Sam Raimi here. Like, there's some moments that really worked for me, but it never knew what it wanted to be. Did it want to be a Wanda film? Did it want to be a sequel to WandaVision? Did it want to be a sequel to Doctor Strange? Was it trying to set up the multiverse? It was way too much going on. The movie really disappointed me. It set up a lot of cool ideas and quickly stripped them away from us. I guess I respect the horror vibes at times, but the movie was a complete mess to me. At number 28 is Eternals. I really dig the characters that are set up in this movie. It's very grand and honestly to a fault. It's trying to do way too much setting up these world-changing concepts within the MCU. Again, I really like the character dynamics in this movie and Chloe Zhao's direction, but the movie is way too long and almost convoluted for its own good. At number 27 on my list is Ant-Man and the Wasp, a fun and harmless sequel to Ant-Man. It's not really doing anything new or special, but the movie exists. I don't hate my time with it, but again, it's one of those that I hardly ever think about. And if it didn't come out, the world wouldn't be any different, if that makes sense. Coming in at number 26, though, I've got Iron Man 3. I know it's a hot take to have this one a little lower. I love Tony Stark as a character. In fact, he's my favorite MCU character, but I don't love what they do with this character in this movie. I think I like the idea more than the execution. Aldrich Killian is a throwaway MCU villain, and the movie is the least memorable Iron Man film to me personally, but coming in at number 25, I've got four. I feel like this movie goes under the radar. It has the classic MCU phase one feel to it. Chris Hemsworth is awesome in this role. We get our first appearance from Loki in this movie, who would go on to become one of the better MCU villains, and all around, it's a simple and effective origin story. Classic classic fish out of water stuff. I really dig the first Thor, especially like the opening 30 minutes. At number 24, I've got Iron Man 2. I have so much nostalgia for this movie, I'm not gonna hide it. It's the first MCU film I saw in theaters. It's got a badass suit up scene. Tony vs. Whiplash at the end with War Machine as well. So, so cool as a kid. Sure, the movie's overstuffed, but it did introduce Natasha Romanoff to the MCU, so I'm never gonna turn that down. It's got its moments to shine and a soundtrack filled with some badass ACDC tunes, but the movie's nothing special at the end of the day. At number 23, I have Black Panther Wakanda forever. I respect this movie paid homage to Chadwick Boseman's legacy as Black Panther and sure he took on the mantle really well. The villain Namor is really solid. The movie's just way too long and drawn out for its own good. There are entire side plots that I could do without and as epic as some of the action is, the movie is really lacking in that department surprisingly. Sure it's emotional but it almost rushes through some of those emotional beats that I wish we could spend more time with. The movie was solid and from here on out we're kind of in that solid to middle ground MCU territory. It just didn't blow me away. Number 22 is the original Black Panther. It is a stronger film than the second because of Killmonger as a villain. The dynamic between Killmonger and T'Challa just carries this movie for me. The world of Wakanda is just so expansive and grandiose. You can't help but love it. The attention to detail is awesome. And of course, Ludwig Göransson's score is the cherry on top of a really solid MCU story for Black Panther. But coming in at number 21 on my list, I've got Black Widow. And the reason Black Widow is above the Black Panther films for me is because of that strong sisterhood relationship between Natasha and Yelena. They are the 
the heart and soul of this Black Widow movie. You throw in David Harbour as the father, Red Guardian, and the whole family dynamic is so strong for me. I am aware this movie has an awful MCU villain and Taskmaster was completely botched, but the family dynamic really carries it for me and that's what I remember most about this film is how strong that sense of family is and it was cool to see Black Widow finally get her own movie after all those years of her being an OG Avenger, she finally got her time to shine. At number 20, I've got Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, a movie that's really slipped for me since I first watched it. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it and I'm probably one of the few people out there who's overall positive on this movie. I just think Scott Lang is such a charismatic character, you can't help but love him. Paul Rudd owns the role. It gets a little too straight up stupid at times. I do like Kang as a villain in this film. He has that threatening presence that anytime he walks into a room, it gets quiet. You know that something serious is probably about to go down. I like the idea of Scott and Cassie's relationship. That's sweet. But the actual performance from Catherine Newton damn near took me out of the movie. So I do like a lot about Quantumania. It was fun at the time and it has those like space adventure vibes. However, it hasn't really done anything for me over time. And I'm curious to see if I'll ever go back and revisit this one because I've only seen it the once. Just above that at number 19, I have The Marvels. I really enjoyed this movie. The chemistry between the main trio of Monica, Carol, and Kamala really was the standout for this movie with Miss Marvel probably being the brightest shining light this film had to offer. Her charisma translated directly from the show onto the big screen and she was getting tons of laughs out of my theater. The movie's got some really unique action as all the characters are constantly switching positions and so they're learning to balance how to you know, switch back and forth so it makes for unique fight choreography and the fight scenes and the movie's silly from the start but it embraces that. That style of humor might not work for everybody but at least it knows what it is. The movie does have a throwaway villain however. I don't even remember her name and honestly, it's too jarring at the start. We're jumping from setting to setting so fast. It's kind of disorienting. And because the movie's only an hour and 45 minutes, there's not as much of a defined structure as other MCU films, but I do prefer this as opposed to two and a half hour films that are long and drawn out. It's a quick hitter, it knows what it is, and it was an enjoyable enough time. But coming at number 18 on my list, I've got Doctor Strange. This movie kind of rotates around the middle tier of the MCU for me quite a bit, but today I was like, you know what, I actually like this movie more than I let on. It's got awesome visual effects that were so trippy to see in the theaters. Stephen Strange's origin is really well done. He's kind of a Tony Stark character type where he's a sarcastic asshole, but he comes around by the end of the movie. He's got lovable character traits for sure. I do think the movie has a somewhat generic villain in the third act is a little repetitive by nature. However, the movie is really cool to see this sorcerer side of the MCU. It's an origin story done right, but coming in at number 17 on my list, I've got Captain America the First Avenger. This is the weakest Cap film by far. I do like to see, you know, 1940s Captain America during that era going against the Nazis and Red Skull, but Red Skull's a generic as hell villain. That's what kind of holds the movie back is how generic it can feel. I do enjoy it quite a bit. I've seen it many times in my life because it is one of those classic phase one movies. It's a very well done origin for Steve Rogers, but at the same time, there's a lot of things holding it back. Give us more 1940s Bucky, please. I'm begging. He was one of the best parts of this movie. And of course, the relationship between Peggy and Cap is a strong point as well. But after all these years, you know, getting these new movies, this one starts to feel more and more, again, generic when compared to some of the others on this list. But coming in at number 16, I've got Spider-Man Far From Home. I actually think this is the weakest live action Spider-Man film, but it's not a bad movie. Jake Gyllenhaal has a blast as Mysterio. It's Spider-Man outside of New York, which is cool at times, but also I do miss that New York setting a bit as well. Again, I like certain ideas in this movie, but it is very predictable as to what's going to happen. I think the movie at times thinks it's smarter than it actually is. There's some cool action in the third act for sure, but a lot of these side characters are knowing like the character of Brad could have been completely done away with, and like the summer fling romances that were going on in this movie were a little unnecessary. So Far From Home's fun, but it is by far the weakest MCU Spidey flick and my least favorite live action Spider-Man film in general, but it's not a bad movie again. I'd still watch it right now and enjoy it. At number 15, I've got Avengers Age of Ultron, an underrated film in the MCU. Ultron's a very solid villain, and this is the only Avengers film where we really get to see them as a family or a team through and through as the first film is their origin Avengers movie, and Infinity War and Endgame were a huge deal. This is like where the OG Avengers get together. We see that team bonding. We see them come together over the course of the film, and it clicks. It also introduces Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver the MCU, and Vision. This is an important MCU movie and one that I feel like goes under the radar a lot. But number 14 on my list is going to be Thor Ragnarok. This is a movie that slips almost every time I make this video just because the humor doesn't really age well for me. If I ever think about the movie or the jokes, I'm like, huh, they hit that first time. But on multiple 
multiple rewatches, it just doesn't hit the same. I do appreciate what this movie did for Thor as a character and making him a lot more likable, and it had his moments to shine. When the Immigrant Song plays during the bridge scene, that's the most memorable part about this movie. Through and through, it's very solid, don't get me wrong. It just doesn't hold up as well as I wish that it did. But number 13 on my list is Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I've seen this movie three times, all three times in theaters, haven't revisited it since then. So it's been almost two years now since I've watched this movie. And the real standouts with Shang-Chi, the action. It was just so cool to see this kung fu style of action in the MCU. It was also neat to explore this fantasy side in the third act with Ta Lo. And then of course, Wen Wu is one of the stronger villains in recent years for the MCU. The father-son dynamic between Shang-Chi and Wen Wu is really well fleshed out and makes for an actual compelling villain. I was so invested with the fantasy side of the MCU and how they set up this world. And I'm excited to see the next project Shang-Chi actually appears in, in the MCU. But number 12 on my list is Ant-Man. This is a delightful heist movie. Scott Lang is so easy to love and root for, and I feel like this is easily the most underappreciated MCU movie. Number 11 on my list is one of my hotter takes, even though it's still really high on this ranking, Captain America The Winter Soldier. This is a movie with some of the best fight scenes in the MCU. Obviously, we see the return of Bucky Barnes as the Winter Soldier, and we see Cap having to come to terms with that over the course of the movie. We get the downfall of S.H.I.E.L.D. in this movie. Cap and Natasha I have some great chemistry. Falcon is introduced. So this movie does a lot for the MCU and it's very enjoyable. I just don't think it's the best comic book film of all time. Like a lot of people like to sit here and say, that's why I think it is slightly overrated. People go, oh, it's the best MCU film. It's the best comic book film. I can't get on that hype train, but the movie is still really damn good. Now we're getting into the top 10. So be sure to hit that like button. And again, drop your ranking down below and let me know where the Marvels lands. But coming in at number 10 is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. This is a movie that I've had an up and down relationship over the years. But when I recently rewatched it before, volume three, I was like, man, I think I always loved this movie. And then I fell into that crowd of like, oh, it's the worst, blah, 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 just because of the social media hate train that it got. But I honestly love this movie. The strong point without question is Yondu and Peter Quill's relationship and how by the end, Peter realizes Yondu was his actual father figure. It's a really sweet movie that'll have the tears flowing by the end. The soundtrack is a bop yet again, and there's awesome action. It's just another really fun space adventure with the Guardians that sure is a little little jarring in the opening because it's all over the place, but once it finds its footing, it becomes this really sentimental story that I can't help but love. And the Guardians are just a space family that I'll always adore. So this movie cracks into my top 10. But at number nine, I've got Spider-Man Homecoming. And I know this is kind of a hot take because a lot of people are like, Homecoming stinks, but Spider-Man Homecoming contains a top three MCU villain in the Vulture. Michael Keaton's Vulture, we need more of him. I know we've got the whole Morbius thing, but we're just gonna act like that never happened. This movie rules and I will never forget my jaw just hitting the floor of the cinema when Michael Keaton's vulture opens the door and Peter's standing there and he's like, you must be Peter. That gets me every single time. And at the time, it felt like we actually got a coming of age story with Spider-Man it kicks ass to this day, and I still enjoy this web-slinging fun time. At number eight on my list, I've got the OG Avengers. There's not much to say here. This is a classic MCU movie. It gave us that team up after years of waiting. The payoff was real. It might be the most quotable MCU film. Seeing the Avengers come together over the Battle of New York, I'll never forget that circle shot. Cinema. Now the next three slots are where we have some real movement compared to my last ranking in May. At number seven, I've got Guardians of the Galaxy, the first film. This is a classic MCU movie, and it's one that I feel like everyone has seen. Even if you're not an MCU fan, you're like, yeah, I've seen Guardians of the Galaxy, that movie rips. I adore this movie. There's no denying that. It sets up the Guardians really well. It gave us that modern classic soundtrack, and there's just no critiques for me. It's an easy five out of five movie. I don't rewatch it as much as I used to. I did realize that. I, I'm like, I think I almost burnt myself out on this movie, like not even in a bad way. I watched it to death in like 2014, 15, and 16, so much so that I don't really go back to it anymore, but I'll always cherish this movie. Serious movement between the six and five slot here. At number six, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. It's right there. It's literally like a 5A, 5B scenario. Guardians 3, I love. The movie wrecked me when I saw it in theaters. It's devastatingly awesome. That's how I've used to describe it. Like it's got some awesome moments. The whole no sleep till Brooklyn one take fight scene. I'll never forget. You know, the end with the dog days are over. It's just so joyful and happy. But then you've also got the moments where we get this backstory on Rocket and it rips your heart out and lights it on fire because that's how it feels watching, you know, Rocket witness the death of his friends. It is so gut-wrenching and the movie doesn't hold back. It's a full journey from start to finish and it really just rounds out this Guardians trilogy so nicely. So much care was put into this film by James Gunn. 
I adore it. It's a five out of five for me. One of my favorite movies of this year, 2023. But I did move it down from five to six. And the number one reason is because of rewatchability. I don't know how often I'm gonna go back to Guardians 3 as compared to the movies in my top five. And for me, if you haven't come on by now, rewatchability is huge when I do a ranking based on my favorites, which is what all my rankings are based on. So Guardians 3, it's like tied for number five. But actually coming in at number five, and one that I had a little lower for a bit, but then I realized, what are you doing, Chris? Spider-Man No Way Home. I don't care. I do not care what anyone out there says about the movie being, oh, it's just nostalgia, fan service, blah, blah. I don't give a damn. This is the best Spider-Man movie ever made to me. And I'm going to stand strong in that opinion. I adore it. I always have. I saw the movie, I think, six times in theaters. Five, actually, five times in theaters. And I never get sick of it. I try and rewatch this one every year at least once. And it gives us the best arc for Peter Parker in an individual Spider-Man film. Tom Holland's Peter Parker finally suffers real loss. The spell goes wrong and he realizes he's messing up his friend's life with their college decisions. He witnesses the death of Aunt May. And when he's at his lowest of lows, who saves him? Peter Parker and Peter Parker, Andrew Garfield, and Tobey Maguire. They relate to him as they also suffer through loss and they teach Tom Holland's Peter Parker what it's like to be Spider-Man. You have to make sacrifices and you have to be better than you ever imagined you could. Of course, the inner child me loves seeing all three Spider-Men swing together and these iconic villains return, but the character arc for Peter Parker in this film is what sells it for me. Peter suffers real loss. It's got some of the coolest web-slinging action in the MCU, and it's just so damn rewatchable to me. I could critique the first hour, but it has to resolve the big twist at the end of Spider-Man Far From Home with Peter's identity being revealed. It can't just go immediately into the middle act of the film, so it has to take its time a little bit and set things up, and I'll never forget the first time I watched this movie. I'll always love Spider-Man No Way Home, and it's back in the top five. It was at seven last time, so it, it made the jump. I said, you know what? It's a top five MCU movie. I need to stop lying to myself. At number four on my list, I've got Captain America Civil War. I've said this a million times, but it's true. This movie tackles conflict better than any in the MCU. You'll be switching sides the entire time. Of of course you've got the airport battle, of course you've got, you know, the final showdown, but the standout moment to me in this movie is when Tony looks at Cap and says, Did you know? Don't bullshit me, Rogers. Did you know? That line delivery, one of my favorites in the entire cinematic universe. The movie gave us Black Panther, gave us Spider-Man, What's Not to Love, Top 4, easy. At number 3 is the one that started it all, a movie I always praise, Iron Man. This is a superhero origin story done right, and I gotta tell this story every single time, so I know you can skip through if you don't want to hear me tell it. You guys who've watched my videos forever are like, here he goes again. In fourth grade, I had this movie on DVD. I would come home from school every day and watch it for like two or three weeks in a row. It was my routine. I'd come home, hit play. It was like two hours and five or 10 minutes, I believe, and I would just run right through it, and then the next day i do the same damn thing. It's a beloved MCU classic for me, and we wouldn't have the rest of this cinematic universe without it. Tony Stark's my favorite MCU character. This is the best solo movie featuring him. It's gotta be in the top three. But that leaves two, and if you haven't guessed by now, number two is Avengers Endgame, number one is Avengers Infinity War. I always talk about these movies together because they're that one-two punch the MCU will never top, probably. Endgame was that satisfying conclusion with the perfect three-act structure. You've got the time heist in the middle, the aftermath of Infinity War in the first act, and the final act is the battle versus Thanos with the emotional sacrifice of Tony and tying all the loose ends up as we head into the next saga of the MCU. And then when it comes to Infinity War, the villain wins. It's a dark movie. It gives us all these heroes uniting finally on the big screen. And it was so cool to see the Guardians with Thor, all these different things. But the movie handles all these character groupings so well, and that's what I commend it for the most. It does end on a dark note. One of the big twists in the MCU, the villain wins. And I say this every time because it's true. This movie could have ended the MCU. It would have been dark as hell, but it would have worked. I don't know if the MCU will ever reach the height of Infinity War Endgame. We'll see though. So that does it for my ranking of all 33 MCU movies. Let me know yours in the comments down below and be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to help reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers here on the channel. I'm really trying to make that final push as we near the end of the year. Go show some love to the Unusual Couple podcast. It is linked down below. We have weekly episodes and they're always a ton of fun. But thank you guys as always for watching and until next time, I'll see you guys later.